we now once again to look at this word. And I believe that the Lord has been blessing you since you came. I said, the Lord, I believe he has been blessing you since you came. And the Lord still has something for you, and you will not miss his blessing in Jesus' name. We, we've been looking at our series on Steps to Destiny. And uh, how many of us want to really fulfill destiny? Amen, amen, I like that. Even the young ones raising their hands. The Lord will help you to fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. I didn't hear a loud amen enough. And as we get into the word of the Lord in the series, I believe you have been taking it. I hope you've been taking it to heart. I hope you have paid attention to the word of God because it's not enough to hear. It's what you do with what you hear that is important. You see, in life, many people hear a lot of things about yourself in particular. If you have acted on all that you have had up until now, I can guarantee, I mean, positive things now, your life will not have been where you are today. And so it's important to pay attention to the word of God. And once again, God is going to be speaking to your heart in Jesus' name. The Lord will speak to my heart. The Lord is going to speak to my heart. And he will speak to your heart as well in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate everyone that is here. Uh, make sure you are not just hearing. You're taking the word. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We bless and magnify your name for your people that are in your house. As well as those who are watching online, either through Zoom, YouTube, or Facebook. You have brought us so we can fulfill destiny. You created us for a purpose. You have a plan for our lives. And the plan and the purpose of God has got to be fulfilled. We want to cooperate with you so that the, your plan can be fulfilled. And so, Lord, I'm asking at this time that as you speak to our hearts, you will help us to comprehend your word so that we will fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts once again. We know that you've been speaking to our hearts since we began the series, and you still want to speak to our hearts this time. Lord, speak to our hearts. We'll receive your word. We'll carry out your word. We'll act on your word. We'll be doers of the word. And our lives will never be the same again. We well, thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people that want to obey the Lord said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We started steps to destiny. And we've covered a number of grounds already. And as we've covered some grounds already, we've covered the fact that we've been gifted. Everyone here has been gifted. And you're not a duplicate, really. There's no one like you. There's nobody like you. There's no one that has the same face like you typically has, have. You are such a unique individual. And God Almighty gave you a gift at least to fulfill destiny. You see, God always it begins with the end in mind. The Bible says, He calleth those things which be not as though they were. Not only that, He declares the end from the beginning. It begins with the end in mind. He has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. He wants to make your life significant. He allows you into this world to come to fulfill destiny. The question is whether you will fulfill that or not. Because there is personal responsibility. So we've seen the fact that we've been gifted, gifted for a purpose. We've also seen the fact that there is the opportunity. God allows opportunity to come. 
And uh, he wants us to be, for, be able to fulfill destiny, fulfill purpose. And I'm asking, the, I'm trusting the Lord that you will so pay attention to the word of God so that you'll be able to fulfill the divine purpose and destiny in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Now, today we're going to look at a few things. But as we look at the things that we're going to consider, I want us to look at our destiny declarations. And uh, these declarations, don't just say them without thinking about them. Don't just say them without reflecting on them. Don't just say them without applying them to your heart. Don't just say them without keeping them at heart. And so we will look at the declarations and can I have the, the uh, that uh, show up on the screen. The de destiny declarations. And we'll say those destiny declarations and you keep them in, uh, in your heart. You meditate on them. You practice them. You look at them. In fact, you write them down. And these uh, details are online. They are on YouTube. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can listen to them over and over and over and over again. Because it's in, you're listening to them over and over and over again and you meditate on those things that you have had. Those are the things that will impact your life for the best. Look at this uh, for the better. Look at this from the word of the Lord in Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I'm going to read Psalm 1, and then look at this in verse 1. Psalm 1, and verse 1. Here the word of the Lord says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. That means there is a delight in the law of the Lord. And there is the meditation on that law, on that word, day and night. The person takes the word of God so seriously. And he knows that this is the key to change of life. This is the key to higher ground. And because the person understands this, he meditates, he delights in the law of the Lord. And then in that law, he meditates day and night. Day and night. Day and night. It must be mighty important for you to meditate on something day and night. For you to do something day and night. You breathe day and night. If you don't breathe regularly, then you don't live. It must be very important for you, therefore, to meditate day and night. Because this word of the Lord is what will bring dominion and deliverance. And it tells us clearly, and it shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in a season, its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever it does shall prosper. That's what the word of the Lord is telling us. That as we meditate on the word of the Lord, then whatever we do will prosper. Now, let's look at those destiny declarations. Number one, say it out loud after me I have a bright future in Christ. One more time. One more time. If I were to ask you what kind of future do you have in Christ? A bright future. Not a dim future. Not a shallow future. Not a hopeless future. There is no hopeless child of God. A child of God has a bright future in Christ. Number two. I'm a man of destiny. One more time. One more time. Number three. I'm gifted by God for a purpose. One more time. One more time. I'm gifted by God for a purpose. Number four. I will fulfill God's purpose for my life. One more time. One more time. Now, you know, this is very important. 
that you are not fulfilling your own purpose for your life. Because if you fulfill your purpose for your life, it's not success. You see, if, if you, a chair is supposed to be sat on, if you don't sit on a chair and you carry a chair on your head, has that chair fulfilled the purpose of its creation? No. And so, if you do something else than God's purpose for your life, that is not considered success in the sight of God. Very important. I will fulfill God's purpose for my life. Not the purpose of the enemy. Not the purpose of what somebody else wants me to do. But the purpose of God for my life. Now, number five. I will choose thoughts and actions that lead to destiny. One more time. I will choose thoughts and actions that lead to destiny. One more time. Thoughts and actions that lead to destiny. Number six, I am an asset and not a liability. One more time. One more time. Amen. I am an asset and not a liability. Another way to say that is I'm a blessing and not a cause. I'm a blessing and not a cause. Wherever I go, I come with blessing. I come to a house, I come with blessing. I come to the place of work, I come with blessing. I go to the store, I go with blessing. I am a blessing and not a cause. Say it out loud. And then number seven, I am a success and my success is good for God's glory. One more time. One more time. So today, I want to focus on an aspect of, uh, that we need. As we think about steps to destiny. You see, when you think about destiny and destination, you take steps to be able to get to your destination. We've looked at some things that are crit critical. But what we're looking at today is an important key that you must not forget. No one can fulfill destiny that minimizes what we're going to look at today. What we're going to look at today is so important, so indispensable, that you must pay attention to it. What are we looking at? We're looking at self-discipline. Everybody say self-discipline. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Now, I'm going to be talking about self-discipline, but uh, a few things to look at. I'll introduce uh, the, the study or the, the, the lesson, and then we'll look at some areas of self-discipline. And then we'll look at catalysts for self-discipline, and then we will conclude. Now, our anchor text has been Matthew chapter 25, and from verse 14 to verse 30. And I want you to, on your own to take to read these yourself. But there are a few verses that I've uh, highlighted there, and I want to show you a few things here. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. That means they were gifted. The servants were gifted. Verse 15, And unto one he gave, gifted five talents, and to another two talents, and to another one. To every man. Somebody say to every man. To every man according to his several ability. That tells us that there is no one that has not been gifted. We've established that. God has gifted everyone. So, this, uh, they, uh, they, they were gifted according to their ability and straightway took his journey. Verse 16. Then he that had received five talents went and traded. Somebody say traded. Say it one more time. Traded with the same. That means this person was given five talents. And what he was given, he counted it very important and very special. You see, if you don't count what you have very special, you will not take good care of it. Why is it that parents don't give uh, a little child something very, very important? Uh, you know, we have different uh, dollar bills. 
You have $20 bills, you have $100 bills, and, and such and such. Now, I want you to think about this. Can you think and imagine now about a, um, a mother? Here is a little child that is two months old, and the mother gives that child a $100 bill. Will the mother do that? Will the mother do that? Why? Because that child does not know the value of what? $100 bills. He might think it's just a paper. And $100 bills is not what? It's so important. There's a lot of value to what? To that $100 bill. And so, the child will not be given that because that thing has a lot of value. And the same thing, you see, when you understand that God has gifted you, and God does not just gift and give people anything that is not of value. He's gifted you to make you an asset, to become valuable. When you understand that, then you take care of the gift. So this person that was given five talents went and traded with the same and made what? Them other five talents. That means the five increased. What was given increased. And the Lord wants us to actually increase what is given into our hands. He wants us to be profitable. He wants us to be an asset. He wants us to be a blessing. He wants us to, to uh, bring glory to his name. Now, as we continue to read, I want you to see this. And likewise, in verse 17, he that had received two, he also did what? Gained. He gained. I want you to pay attention to some of the words I've highlighted there. Traded the same and made them and then gained. He traded, he gained. And then he gained order two. So five gained five. That makes it what? That makes it what? Ten. Thank you. Two gained two. And that makes it what? Four. Verse 18, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and eat his Lord's what? Money. So you see the, those categories of the people there. Now you will discover something. That as you consider these three classes or categories, uh, these three uh, people, one thing that is critical here is the key is what is known as self-discipline you cannot gain you cannot trade you cannot increase without what self-discipline it's something that is so important in these that we have read and when you look at first corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 and 25 it tells us know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one received the prize. When you think about those who run, for example, whether they are running in the Olympics and they, they, are, under, they are running, whether it's the 100 meters dash, you will see that nobody goes to the Olympic and they say, why are you going to the Olympic? Oh, I just want to run for running's sake. I just want to run and see the place. No, they run to get what? A prize. A prize. A prize. And the Lord wants us to understand that life is a race. Life is what? Life is what? Life is what? A race. You see, if you are not destiny minded, you will not fulfill destiny. If you don't understand that life is a race and there is a prize to win, you will not be able to fulfill destiny. And so, you find a person like Apostle Paul who fulfilled destiny. And you remember his story. He said, I have finished my... He's finished his course. He's finished his race. He completed what he started because he understood this. Now, it says here, so run. So run that you may do what? That you may do what? Obtain. You run so you can obtain what? A price. So run. So you may obtain what? A price. And if you know about anybody that is running, preparing for the Olympics, what is one thing you find that must be key in their lives? Somebody said practice. Very good. Any other thing? 
Discipline. You see, under everything is what? Discipline. It takes discipline when the coach says, it's time to practice to get up when you feel tired. Doesn't it? It takes discipline. It takes discipline sometimes also, you know, in this Christian race, for you to get up when you feel tired, to still come to church. It takes that discipline to tell your body and say, body, even though the body wants to sleep more. And you know sometimes that even though the body wants to sleep more, uh, but when you get up and you begin to go, what happens to the sleep? It goes away. But because you took the first step, that's why discipline is key. And it's so important that I want to make sure we cover it. Now, self-discipline is key. Uh, uh, self-discipline is key to destiny. It's very important to destiny. And there are some destiny questions that I want you to see. Some destiny questions that I want you to see. The first one is this. What have you done with God's gift to you? You know, God has gifted you. What have you done to his gift to you? He's gifted us with Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He paid the price. You know that it takes the discipline of decision to accept Jesus into your life? There are people they are in church for so many years. They have been hearing about Jesus dying on the cross. And the discipline of decision is not in their lives. And because that is missing, they have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. They may even be born in church. And they are there for years, 10 years, 15 years. And they have just not accepted Christ. The discipline of decision. What have you done with God's gift to you? Not only that. The other gifts is giving you the endowments of God in your life. What have you done with God's endowments for your, to your life? The other question I have is this. What are you doing with what God has given you? You see, I said, what have you done in the past? And what are you doing? There are some people that they always refer to, this to, to the past. They are historical. They refer to the past. It's good to learn from the past. But the question is, what are you doing today with what he has given you? Very, very important. Now, there are some destiny uh, points I want to make. These are like PowerPoints for destiny. Destiny, what is destiny? Because, oh, sorry, what is self-discipline? These are some PowerPoints for self-discipline. What is self-discipline? Self-discipline, I know you can say, if I ask you, you might say self-control. But as we look at self-discipline, is the consistent application of certain mindsets and actions that are vital for a colorful destiny. If your destiny will be colorful, if your destiny will be great, there are some mindsets and actions you must have. And the earlier you have those mindsets, the better for you. You think about Joseph. If I ask you, did Joseph have a, a colorful destiny or not? How many people would like to name their children Joseph? If you had your way. People. People. Because he had what? A colorful destiny. But you must remember that Joseph had some mindsets and took some actions that made his, color, his destiny what? Colorful. So that's what self-discipline is. And what I want to show you is I'm going to try my best to show you some areas of, of self-discipline. I'm going to also try my best to show you some catalysts for self-discipline. I mean, self-discipline in, in itself can take quite some time as we unravel the aspects of self-discipline. Now, self-discipline is required to generate impact. If you want to generate impact, self-discipline is important. If somebody wants to make it even to the Olympics, the shortlist, for example, the shortlist people for the NFL, the shortlist people for the NBA, the shortlist people for the MLB, Major League Baseball, the shortlist people for different areas, the shortlist people for the Olympics. If you are going to be shortlisted, you must have some real self-discipline, isn't it? And because you must have some real self-discipline, you're already making, you're generating what? Impact. For them to be able to do what? Shortlist you. 
If you're going to run now into the Olymp in the Olympics and really win a prize for the first time, you must have what? Still self-discipline. You generate impact. But not only that. Self-discipline is also required to grow in impact. You see, there are some people, they only make impact once. They won the gold once. And after that, you don't hear about them anymore. But if you're going to grow in impact, if your impact will continue to help others, if your impact will continue to be obvious, that it's not just one time, but it's going to grow, you must continue to do what? Have self-discipline. You see, it's very important. Not only that. So, you generate impact. You grow in impact. If you're going to sustain relevance, because you see there are some people, that if you want to refer to them, you say, well, it used to be. She used to be. But now we don't know. If you are going to continue to be relevant, you need what? Self-discipline. That's what made Apostle Paul still very relevant. He was relevant. He continued to be relevant. He generated impact. He grew in impact. And he continued to generate impact. Very, very important. There is no limit to your growth and enlargement in Christ if you decide to embark on self-discipline. There is no limit to your growth and enlargement in Christ. That means there is no limit to how, how high you can go in Christ. There is no limit to how much God can use you if you decide to leverage self-discipline. Very, very important. You see, the moment you stop paying the price of self-discipline, the moment you begin to lose impact. You see, and then the life will not, make, will not be colorful. Very important. Self-discipline empowers the star in you to shine. There is a star in you. That's the gift that God has given you. With self-discipline, you are able to sharpen the gift God has given you. And then it allows the star in you to do what? To shine. You see, you will never know how great, by God's grace, you can be. Until you begin to practice self-discipline. I, I want you to look up now. And those who are watching either through Zoom, on YouTube, uh, or Facebook, please uh, look up and pay attention. Uh, look at this, for example. Here you find a student. You may have seen that maybe in your, in your, in your journey. Here you find a student, maybe in middle school. And that student has not been doing very well. In fact, mommy and daddy have been very concerned about this student. But then, and the grades have not been very great. In fact, the student has really struggled a whole lot. So many C's. And the student has struggled. All of a sudden, the child gets to high school. And the child now thinks and says, Look at me. I think I can do better. Why haven't I been doing very well? I'm going to discipline myself. And cut down on the time of play and watching video games. I'm going to discipline myself and pick the books and begin to read. All of a sudden, from C, the child makes an A. The question is this Is it not the same brain it's had all along? Is it not the same brain? It's the same brain. What made the difference? Very good. Self-discipline. You never can tell how great, by God's grace, God will turn your life to be until you practice self-discipline. There is a star in you. There are people of destinies in front of me. But it will only show when you make self-discipline a practice. Now, it's important to also know that nothing worthwhile is easy. You discipline yourself to take the route or the route to your destiny. There are many details. Say, for example, as you were coming to the church, as you were coming, if you took the highway, there were some exits. But you didn't take those exits because they were not 
pertinent. They were not relevant. They were not important to your destiny, your destination. Your destination was to come where? Here. So you saw those routes, you saw those exits, you saw those details, but you didn't take them because they were not relevant. You only took the detail or the exit that was relevant to your destiny. That when you have self-discipline, you take the route to your destiny. There are many people, they take exits that are not relevant. They take details that are not relevant. And because of that, their destiny is n- are not as colorful as, as it should be. Now, you will never be more distinguished in life than your level of self-discipline. You will never be more distinguished in life than your level of what? Of what? Of what? You remember J- Joseph. Joseph said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against who? God. When Potiphar's wife wanted to mess him up, he understood he was a man of destiny. And it was Joseph that overcame that temptation that became distinguished. You will never be more distinguished in life than your level of self-discipline. See, if you, if you think about even things in our world, you find people that have played basketball. And uh, you, you discover that there are times that they, had, maybe they may have a challenge in one area. And the coach might say, to do this, throw 500 balls, make 500 throws every day. 500, not 2, not 100. You can think about how challenging 500 throws every day can be. But if the person does that, it breaks the barrier. It's able to cross over to another level. That's what we're talking about. As we think about self-discipline, I want to look at some areas of self-discipline because our time is going. What are some areas of self-discipline? Before I talk about those areas, I want you to think about 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 11. When I was a child, what what did I do as a child? I speak what? Now, before I read that, if there's anything that you can tell with little children, are little children self-disciplined or not? Are they or not? They are not. You typically don't find self-discipline, you know, in little children. The child wants it and he wants it when? Right now. And the child, sometimes, you know, uh, the the child doesn't know that uh, that maybe mommy has some guests. And daddy has some guests. Some people came home. And then some things that the child should not say in the presence of guests, the child begins to do what? Because the child does not understand self-discipline. And so you find here... It's telling us, it's the picture of the areas that we need what? Self-discipline. It says, when I was a child, I did what? I did what? I spake as a child. Now, look at the next thing. I understood as what? And then, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I taught As a child. You see those three things. Speak. The thoughts. The understanding. The reasoning. And the words. You see those three things. Are important areas. If we're going to grow. In self-discipline. Very very important. And I'm going to show you from scriptures. Why those are key. And what I want to do. Is to pick the first. The last one first. The thoughts. You see the Bible tells us very clearly. In Proverbs 23, verse 7. Somebody say Proverbs 23, 7. Say it louder yet. Say it for those on YouTube to hear your voice. What does it say? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You see, your most dominant thoughts control your life. Your most dominant thoughts control your life. 
You know, it, and it happens in life like that. Here you are. You're trying to go somewhere. Maybe you're trying to go home. But what was uppermost on your mind at that time was not home. And before you knew, you, before you knew it, you already drove to another place that is not home. Why? Because that was what was uppermost on your path. Your most dominant thoughts control your life ultimately. That's why it's important to make sure you watch your thoughts. The Bible tells us in Numbers 13 and in verse 33. And it tells us about the, the, the people of the children of Israel. You see, the 10, 12 spies were sent. 10 spies came back with an evil report. And this is what they said. They said, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as what? As grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. That was their thought. That was their mentality. You see, their mentality defeated them. It was not even the enemy that defeated them. Their mentality defeated them. What they were thinking about defeated them. They thought about the fact that they could not overcome and they did not overcome. They thought about the fact that they could not get into the promised land and they perished in the wilderness. They thought about the fact that they were, more, they were overcome and they were overcome by the enemy. That's why it's very important what you think. The thoughts of defeat will bring defeat in your life. The thoughts of poverty, no matter how wealthy the person is, if you think poverty, you become poor. You see, it's very important. You understand the principles of the word of God. They said they will not be able to get there. They were thinking like that. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is, you remember it says, I taught as a child. I understood as a child. Understanding. You can also call it the reasoning. You see how we reason is important. There are some people, they reason, they have a victim mentality reasoning. The way they think about and the process information is that, well, they are victims. They would not have been where they are, but sometimes they say it's the color of their skin. Sometimes it says, well, because the enemies are too many. Sometimes they say, well, maybe mommy has some, uh, mommy and daddy had some, uh, some, some jokes and some enemies following them and they passed it onto them. And they, they, they just try to pass the buck. They try to make sure, see themselves as what? Victims in life. Thank God I'm a victor, I'm not a victim. Say it out loud. I'm a victor, I'm not a victim. Very, very important. You see, that's very important. If you look at Romans chapter 10 verse 12, it says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord. Everybody say, for the same Lord. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. For the same Lord. It does not matter the color of your skin. For the same Lord. The same Lord that favored Paul the Apostle favors me. The same Lord that favors Joseph favors me. The same Lord that helped Daniel is available to me. For the same Lord is rich. For the same Lord over all is rich to all that call upon him. Now the other area is this. That I want to also focus on where self-discipline is required is in our words. What we say is important. Your words can, def can bring defeat and they can also bring victory. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18.21 that death and life. Somebody say death and life. Everybody say death and life. You see, you can say it like that. V defeat and victory. Blessing, cause and blessing. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They are associated with what you say. And they that love it 
shall eat the fruit thereof. Very important. Now, I want to move very quickly to catalysts for self-discipline. What are some things that will really help us to be self-disciplined? And what are some things that will help ensure that self-discipline is in our lives? Because as you could, as I showed you already, that if you're going to move to the next level, if you're going to be distinguished, if you're going to have colorful destiny, self-discipline is important. But what are some catalysts? What are some things that will help to ensure that, it's, that, it's, uh, uh, that you have self-discipline? Number one is a goal. Somebody say a goal. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Goals. Goals are important in life. And how can you eat a target you don't see or you don't have? I want you to think about that question. Here is a target. If you don't see a target, or you don't have a target, how can you say, how can you determine that you've hit the target? No way. It's until you have a target that you can say, I've hit the target, I have not hit the target. That's how important goals are. Goals are like targets. And God that we serve is a goal-oriented God. God is a goal-oriented God. I said this before. You see, in Isaiah chapter 46, 9 to 10, God says he declares the end from the beginning. And God wants us to have goals. Uh, when you look at the word of God that says the desires of the righteous shall be granted, what's another word for desires? The goals. When it says ask and it shall be given you, you ask because there is a goal. Seek and you will find. You seek because there is a goal. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You knock because there is a goal. God is a goal-oriented God. In fact, he, he, he calls the things. He calls the things. He calls the things which be not as though they were. Those things are goals. And faith is always associated with goals. Faith is the substance of things you must never when you read the word of god you must look at the word of god holistically the word of god is so rich the word of god is to bring colorful destiny into our lives that's why the bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable god's word is for profitable living that you are able to live a profitable life what i mean by pro a fulfilled life in this world a life that enables you to fulfill the divine purpose for your life. So, it's important for you to have goals. Goals give direction. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 18, Where there is no vision, the people perish. What that means is this. When there is no vision, where there are no goals, the people cast off restraint. They become indisciplined. If you're going to be disciplined, then you need what? Goals. You know, somebody wants to take an exam. Somebody has been playing and playing, and all of a sudden says, I want to take an exam. I want to enroll back in school. I want to take this exam. And he sets the date. Now, what happens to that individual? All of a sudden, because there's a goal, there's what? Discipline. You see, this is a catalyst for self-discipline goals will help you to accomplish to have self-discipline if you want to grow in your prayer life you want to be to you want to grow in your prayer life you set your goal maybe you've been praying for 10 minutes and you're tired set a goal for 15 minutes 20 minutes and you trust the holy spirit to help you the bible says we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need now the spirit of prayer and supplication is available and you you help you ask the lord to help you and you set that goal it will help you to stretch and shine you see very important goals are important in life i'm asking you the question do you have goals or have you allowed covid19 to erase all your goals it's like joseph saying well look at i thought i would be a great person but look at where I find myself. 
I'm right now in Potiphar's house. I'm right now in the prison. I cancel all my goals. Joseph said, no, never. And I challenge you, don't allow COVID-19 to make you do what? Cancel your, your goals. Believe God, there will be way and he's a way maker. I said he's a way maker. It will help you to have creativity that the goals of your life will still be fulfilled in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, what's another catalyst for self-discipline is planning. Everybody say planning. I I want you to think about some things that I've asked there. Imagine a pilot without a plan. Think about that. Let it sink in. Here is a pilot. You're in the plane. And you say, pilot, where are we going? And you know that typically when you're in the plane, the pilot will tell where, we are, where you're going, isn't it? And it will tell you where, when, what time, the duration of the flight. Suppose the pilot just, everybody's in the plane, and the plane takes off, and it says, ladies and gentlemen, we're on this flight. We don't know where we're going. <laughs> Bear with me. Whenever the, whenever the gas, the fuel runs out, that's where we find ourselves. You say, pilot, please, can we get down? <laughs> Imagine that. Do you know that's how some people live their lives? No plan. You see, you're laughing. But it's, that's the way some people live their lives. That's what happens if you don't have a plan. Imagine. Imagine not just that a, a pilot without a plan. Imagine a business without a plan. Whenever you want to go to the bank, for example, and you say, I have this business idea. What do they ask for? A business what? Plan. They say, show us your business plan. Let's look at it and analyze your business plan to see if we, can, if we need to actually give you money to help you. You see, business plans are important for a business that will strive and succeed. And if that is important, there are some people, they don't have life plans. They don't have a goal for their lives. They don't have plan for their lives. They wake up every day like this, and they wonder how the day has gone. They wake up in the morning, maybe they wake up like 10 o'clock. Oh, they say it's still 10 o'clock. I still see it's 10 o'clock. Let me sleep a little bit more. From 10 o'clock, it becomes 1 o'clock. Oh, they say it's 1 o'clock now. Okay, I think I should try and eat breakfast and lunch together. And so as they wake up at 1 o'clock, they eat breakfast and lunch. And then after that, they watch the TV. And after they watch TV, they go, I feel like sleeping now. They go back to the bed. (laughs) And they sleep a little bit more. They said, let me sleep a little bit more. By the time they wake up, they have woken up 6 p.m. Oh, they say the day is gone already. It's almost time for dinner. What have you done that day? What have you done that day? Nothing. Thank you. You see, that's what happens when there is no life plan. Imagine a building without a plan. See, if you are going to just build a shed, if it's a shed, you don't really need a plan for a shed. It's a small, it's a shed. But if you're going to build a significant life, if you're going to build a significant building, think about a five-story building, a 10-story building, a 20-story building, a 100-story building, a 150-story building that people pass by like this and they look up and say, this is fantastic. You need a plan. If your life will be fantastic, you need a life plan. It will never just happen like that. You see, very important. This is a catalyst for self-discipline. If you fail to plan, you have done what? You have planned to fail. Now, are you getting something from the word? Now, as we look at the third thing here, and there are other aspects, I I can talk about time management as well. But it's sufficient to just... Look at this few because of our time. The other thing I want to talk about is self-discipline and focus. And we can spend a lot of time on focus. The power of focus. What focus will do in your life. You know, as I think about life and people that have been very successful in the Bible, 
and even in life, there is something you will find in their lives. You will find what? Focus. You prick Apostle Paul and you see this one thing I do. It was a focused man. He said, when the Lord called me, immediately, somebody say immediately, I conferred not with what? Flesh and blood. Focus. If it was not focused, it would not make the impact he made. Look at the New Testament. Who wrote the majority of the New Testament? Paul. You read about all that he has written by the Holy Ghost. It was because of focus. And if you want to start your Christian race and finish it well, what do you need? Focus. You see, when Paul started, there were enemies. In fact, there were some people that said they will not eat until they kill him. There was opposition. There were so many oppositions against his life. But he was so focused that the oppositions could not drive him back. In fact, at another time, it was somewhere they were preaching the word and the opposition was so great. And so the Bible records, because the opposition was so great, it stayed there even longer. It's like, devil, you will not run me out of town, I will run you out of town. Brothers and sisters, you've got to have focus. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to have focus. Say it very well. Say it very well. Say it very well. Spend your time on high value activities and you will have no time for low value activities. You see, if you plan your life and spend your life and your time on high value activities, you will have no time for low value activities. You will have no time for, you, your time is already budgeted. You see, people talk about budgeting their money. You budget your time. Because time is not just money, time is life. And time management is life management. Very important. As you think about this, I gave a Bible reference there. You read that and you learn about focus. My question to you is this. Are you easily distracted from destiny? Are there some things that are pulling you away? They may appear to look nice, but they're pulling you away from destiny. And remember, there can be no joy, no fulfillment until destiny is accomplished. As we look at this, I want to wrap up and conclude. And as I want to wrap up here and conclude, there are some destiny thoughts I want to bring your way. And I want you to think about these critically. Treat your, pr your present as the future. And the future will be delivered to you. Treat your present as the future. And the future will be delivered to you. I want to say it one more time because it's so important. Treat your present as the future. And the future will be delivered unto you. You know, sometimes it happens like this. Uh, some, somebody wants to run for you. Um, a um, run for maybe the, uh, for a mayor, as a mayor. He wants to run for a political office. And then, because the person didn't treat his present as the future, that person has done some dumb, dumb things, what they call dumb things. And when he's now trying to run, they begin to bring things out of the, of the past. And they say, because of this, mm -mm, it's not qualified. What would have happened if that person had thought well and has made sure that he or she treats the present as the future? There'll be nothing like that. Treat your present as your future. And the future will be delivered into your hand. You know what that also means? That means you're not doing eye service. You see, God is always there. You practice his presence. You treat your present as the future. And you do that like Joseph did. 
Joseph knew that somebody that will be at that level will go to the level of the dream, the fulfillment of the dream. Will not mess up with the Potiphar's wife. Will not, in fact, do you realize that Potiphar had nothing to say about Joseph that you stole money? Because he treated his present as his, his present, the present as the future. And the future of excellence was gallantly delivered unto him. That when the butler, when Pharaoh had a dream, and Pharaoh said, I have this dream. It's a significant dream. Oh, the butler said, I remember somebody. And they brought Joseph. And as Joseph interpreted, when they brought Joseph, did you realize something? That nobody said, don't bring him. We've had that story about him. Nobody said anything. He treated his presence, his present as the future. And the future was delivered unto him. Very important. Another destiny taught here that I want to bring out to you is this. Make every opportunity your masterpiece. Make every opportunity your masterpiece. You are praying, make it a masterful time of prayer. You are coming, you want to, you are, you are going to be in church, be there, all ears, wanting to hear from God. Because God wants to speak to you. Make every opportunity your masterpiece. You are given a work to do in the place of work. Don't do shabby work. Don't just do any work. Make it your masterpiece. Do the very best you can do. And when you make it a habit like that, God will soon showcase you. I said, God will soon showcase you. You know, say for example, I want to make this a little bit practical now. Here is uh, the teacher just add, the professor just add, that here is we're trying to give a student a scholarship. And um, there are some things we're looking at for that student. We're looking at consistency. We're looking at this. We're looking at that. And here you are. You've, been, you've, made, you've made your, uh, your work a masterpiece every time. Think about this. A teacher's, a professor's mind will soon go to that student. Because the student, the professor can tell who always does the best work. When the opportunity comes, it just says, who do you recommend? Oh, the professor may not even think twice. He says, I'm convinced. He's always done a masterful work. And then it becomes clear. Isn't that what happened to David? When evil spirit was tormenting Saul. And they were looking for somebody who will play and, t- and drive out that evil spirit. Somebody said, I've seen the son of Jesse. David, that man could play. He made every time. It was not, it was not even necessarily King David. Saul was there because he was just playing. He made every opportunity his masterpiece. And somebody never forgot. If he played in a way that was not masterful, will that person remember and suggest him? No. Very important. You see, brothers and sisters, and those listening to me online, these are important keys. For a colorful destiny. Finally. I know I have their persistence. And self-discipline in action. There are some people. They give up too quickly. And we live in a time. When people. They take this major. They switch. They say this major is too difficult. They take this other major. They say oh this one is too difficult. They start with. Sometimes it happens like that. This major too difficult. This major too difficult. This major too difficult. And a college program. That should have taken them four years is taking eight years because the person is finding every major difficult. When it, which one is not going to be challenging? So it's important to make sure we keep that in mind. Finally, a new day for you has come with Jesus. Because what has Jesus done for us? For when we were yet without strength to be disciplined, Christ died for the ungodly. The presence of Jesus in us helps us to be disciplined because now I can do 
all things. Somebody say it. I can do. Say it out louder. Say it out louder. Now, what that means for you might be, I can do math. Math has been a challenge. I can do all things. For you, it might be that you have a challenging work in the place of work, and it just requires discipline and requires you thinking, and then you're wondering, am I going to quit or not? I can do. Say it out louder. Say it out louder. All things through Christ that strengthens me. It gives us the power to be disciplined. And I welcome you to the arena of self-discipline for a colorful destiny because Jesus is here to help you. And that's what Christ has spoken to our hearts today. You have no excuses for remaining at the same level. The future is very bright. When are you going to climb and fly in the strength of the Lord with self-discipline to a colorful destiny? I want you to rise as we pray. Commit yourself to the hand of the Lord. The future is very bright, but it's at the cost of self-discipline. The future is very bright, but it's at the cost of self-discipline. Think about the word you have had. Think about the word you have had. You have had. Are your thoughts disciplined? Is your understanding, your reasoning disciplined? Do you see yourself as a victim or a victor? Are your words disciplined? Death and life are in the power of the word, of the tongue. Do you have goals? Or have you allowed COVID-19 to cancel all your goals? And now you're only sleeping and eating and you're not really thinking strategically about life? There must be a change. Because God has more for you in Christ. Goals give direction. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Self-discipline and planning. Imagine a pilot without a plan. Imagine a business without a plan. Imagine a building without a plan. Imagine a life without a plan. If you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. Self-discipline and focus. Let your eyes look right on. And let your eyelids look straight before thee. Focus is critical to impact. Spend your time on high-value activities. And you will have no time for low-value activities. Are you easily distracted from destiny? Are you easily distracted from destiny? You are meant for more. You are made for more. There is more God wants to do in your life. Treat your present as the future. And the future will be delivered to you. Make every opportunity your masterpiece. Oh, Jesus paid the price. He died on the cross to give us strength. In your area of weakness, you can receive strength to be disciplined today. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, here is your opportunity. Let Christ come into your heart. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. And a colorful destiny awaits you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, wherever you are online, I want you to talk to the Lord and tell the Lord you are sorry for your sins. The Lord will forgive you. You accept Jesus into your heart. You repent of all your evil ways. And ask God for strength to live the life that pleases God. And then you can ask God for strength also 
to become disciplined in the areas of weakness. And then you will discover that you will get to the height of divine appointment. I want to pray for you right now and bring confirmation of the blessing of the word into your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Daddy, for your word. You've spoken to our hearts. You've given us revelation knowledge. You've shown us things we didn't think about, we have not thought about until now, things we didn't probably even know. But you've shown us all this because you have a bright future for us. I'm asking for those who are giving their hearts to Jesus, precious Jesus, the Savior of the world, the gift of God from heaven to mankind. I'm asking as many as want the blood of Jesus to wash away their sins. Lord, I pray that the blood of the Lamb cleanse them in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking for those who are struggling with one area or the other to be able to have self-discipline. Lord, I pray for them that by your power and your might, you will grant them this self-discipline in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking, by your spirit and power, the colorful destiny that you have for your people, none of us will miss it in Jesus' name. Help us to pay attention to your word. Help us to practice the word. And help us to be achievers in Jesus' name. We are not victims, we are victor. We are assets and not liabilities. We are blessings and not causes. Thank you, Father. As a new week has started for your people, it's a week, a blessed week. A blessed life. Help your people to take blessed steps in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Prosper the work of the hands of your people. Take your people to greater heights and let your glory shine upon your people. We well, thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God said, One more time. One more time. Amen. Thank you for coming and God bless you.